Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, as much as this morning was a bit chaotic, it actually gave me a bit of pause and um, remembrance that we're all in this together. Um, I will begin, um, if I know how to use my clips, with our traditional territory acknowledgement. So I'm here in Richmond and I'd like to acknowledge and thank the first peoples of the Hunkaminam language group on whose traditional unceded territories we teach, learn and live. Um, I'd also like to invite you to take a moment now and acknowledge the territories in which you are joining me from. Um, okay, so for today's workshop, um, this is a bit of our agenda. Um, Thank you again for taking the time to be here with me and selecting me as your first session. I hope I don't disappoint you. Like Davika, I kind of feel like a bit of an imposter. So feel free to, at the end, where you see questions and affirmations, um, build me in that validation. Um, also, I uh, want to apologize. I feel like I gave you a bit of a bait and switch. Um, this won't be hands-on at all. There won't be... Um, breakout rooms and unfortunately i'm not going to give you a takeaway activity to do tomorrow um today's format is more of a confessional of the hills and valleys that took me through the year of covid or the never-ending year of covid and the modifications i made to my pedagogical thinking and practice feel free to use the chat um i can't moderate it um i would love to sit and chat with you but um i I'm a multitasker, but not that quick. Um, and at the end, please feel free to unmute yourself and chat as freely as you wish. So I am going to walk you through what last year was a bit for me. Um, if you were like me and was kind of like, what's a school story? Uh, we all have one. I will explain a little bit about that, how it relates to the leading learning standards of practice and how I used them last year to um, integrate makerspace back into my life. And um, I'll talk a little bit more about that as well. So I'm not 100% positive about all of your districts, but during the year of COVID, my role as TL was completely uprooted and turned upside down. In my district, all non-enrolling teachers were cohorted with two classroom divisions and we had to provide those divisions with prep periods, ELL, resource support, creating IEPs, case management. Uh, we also, in my case, had um, transitional learning, which was our online learning platform for those who chose to stay at home and learn um, remotely. And um, I was at one point in um, allocated K through six French immersion to help moderate and assess their learning. So that was kind of a heavy load for me. Um, library was closed physically. However, teachers still expected some sort of professional support, even though um, my role was completely, completely changed. Um, to say that I lost myself in all the expectations that were thrown on me um, is a bit of an understatement. I had no specializations or authority in any of these other um, aspects that I was being asked to do, but asked to do it in a manner in which um, satisfied all the needs of the school. Additionally, I, as a teacher librarian, wanted to support my colleagues as much as I could, as we all do, so I put probably more expectations on myself than I did and to my own peril. Now, I saw this on Twitter, I believe. Um, it's adapted from, um, it's called Stress First Aid. It was designed for firefighters and firefighters and EMS workers um, who are constantly under stress. And I related this um, quite vividly. One point mid-January 2021, um, I was standing in the rain teaching gym for my relief blocks because that's what we do. Um, I was miserable. I was struggling and really evaluating how I could keep up with this pace for another six months. Um, I was chatting with my admin and she asked me, well, 
why don't you teach something you're passionate about? Well, at the time, that comment kind of hit me with the tone of let them eat cake. And once I got beyond the hurt and the can't anybody see I'm drowning here, um, I'm doing all these things, it took me some time to climb down off that anger management, uh, anger mountain and realize that actually I could create the space for this. I had to acknowledge that the exhaustion, um, the poor performance, expectations I had on myself, um, self-medicating with food. People talk about the COVID-15. Well, I tell you, I probably have that COVID-45. Um, feeling overwhelmed and irritated. I, I needed a change and I just didn't know how to do it within the confines of my job. So how did I get back from struggling to thriving? So it was hard, but I told my teachers I was not, no longer going to be teaching them gym. I couldn't do it. There are certain things that I couldn't take off my plate. The ELL uh, resource support couldn't take that off my plate. TL learning, online remote learning, not tra uh, teacher librarian learning, transitional learning, couldn't take that off my plate. Meetings couldn't take that off my plate. The only thing I had power and control over was my abilities and um, autonomy in teaching those relief periods. Now, in my school district, um, contractually, we no longer provide library as prep, um, which is super awesome. However, when I told my teachers that I would be teaching them ADST, there was a little bit more tension. Um, they didn't believe that just playing or doing ADST or maker was enough work to validate two dedicated blocks um, as there was much more learning to be done somewhere else. So I decided that I was going to cluster some learning areas to well, you don't never have to justify your work, but to help them understand how much work is entailed in what we actually do. So I came back to what's the purpose? What's the purpose of education? Uh, what's the purpose of um, teacher librarianship? Uh, what's the purpose of co-learning? Um, and I went back to the documents. So for BC Ministry of Education, our policy for student success, this is the bar that um, the ministry um, attains all of their policy and um, what is it called? Oh, I lost my mind. Strategic planning towards. So in their mind, the ministry says that the purpose of the British Columbia school system is to enable learners to develop their individual potential and to acquire the knowledge, skills, and attitudes needed to contribute to a healthy society and prosperous and sustainable economy. Mouthful. But I'm a learner too. How is the BC education system providing these opportunities for me to be successful in my learning within my school context for my students? So we work within a system, a system, a hierarchical system. So each year the district must submit a report to the ministry regarding how it's meeting its mandate um, to improve measurable outcomes for in relation to the framework of enhanced student learning. Mouthful. So technically we are employed by our district. Our district is funded by the ministry, but we also um, are employed by BCPC. And they show the alignment of um, our strategies like a triangle like this, and we're here at the bottom and then it fills up. But I actually see our triangle kind of like this, where we're all trying to meet the um, outcomes of those at the top. So how can I make what I do purposeful, um, trusting that uh, my decisions are meeting these standards and also advocating for libraries as specialists in these things. So the way they um, measure these results are three ways. Intellectual development, uh, that's where our FSAs come into play. Human and social development, the 
student satisfaction surveys. They're also done in grade fours and four and seven, um, as well as career development. And that essentially is the numbers of people who are completing high school. Uh, also other indicators, um, post-secondary enrollment, et cetera, et cetera. So what does that mean? Why do I care? Because we are leaders in inquiry and we are learners in um, developing prosperous, educated citizens. Why do I care? So I go back to the documents to gather data and focus on learning. All school stories have to uh, be aligned with the spirals of inquiry. If you haven't read the Spiros playbook, um, I recommend you do. It's on uh, easily available through PDF, uh, through Google. And um, each school essentially should have an inquiry team, which includes your teachers, your uh, support system, so your EAs and your resource teachers, et cetera, and your admin. I thought a lot about this. What are our guiding questions for our school story? Within the Spirals playbook, there's four essential guiding questions. Can you name two people in your setting who believe that you will be a success? At the time, probably not. Now, most definitely. Um, I don't know, Christine, if you're out there, you were one of my per people last year who was there constantly to hear my grumblings and to share my frustrations about how working in the environment during COVID, that is not what I signed up to do. Um, I very heartfully thought about changing professions. Um, I couldn't say that what I was learning and teaching had any importance to me at the time. I felt that I should have just been congratulated for showing up and no one was validating that. Um, so what's next? So I'm not 100% sure, but I started with meaning making. I have to know why I'm coming into school and why I'm doing this every day, even though I feel like I'm struggling and not getting through it. For me, it was the kids. So how do I make purposeful teaching purposeful for me? So I um, made my connections. I trusted in the system, trusting that they'll see me and I'll see them for what the common goals hoping maybe one day we'll get out of this pandemic. Um, so I'm getting lost in my my thoughts here from last year and um, remembering how actually kind of um, demoralizing it was, but there's hope, hope. And that's what the next steps are. Hope that growing and expanding um, my own personal mandate will somehow come through to connect with um, other teachers, uh, other district uh, support teams, and that in some way I can literally sew myself into the fabric of the school so that libraries can emerge as something that is more important than data school story. So where do we fit in as teacher librarians? Who's telling your story? We do a lot of data collection from students. We do a lot of data collection for teachers. The superintendent um, definitely collects a lot of data. Um, and our community members and care workers. But where do we fit in? We do, we're, not, we're not teachers, technically. We're not classroom teachers. We don't fit into the admin system. Um, we see a lot of students, but um, we don't necessarily have the capacity to communicate our understanding of them with the teachers or the principal. So I went back to the documents and realized that our mandate, the Leading Learning Standards Practice, aligns quite efficiently with this circle of student success. So where it says future-oriented um, for the student success, facilitating collaborative engagement and empowering community of learners align quite perfectly. Um, developing a high and measurable standards, 
Yes, we do that every day here in the library uh, through advancing the learning community and achieving school goals. Uh, quality teaching and leadership, of course, that's what we do every day when we collaborate with our teachers and uh, develop our own programming. Student-centered learning. I know it's obvious, and it wasn't obvious until I actually put the two pictures together that our colors are there and I, they haven't met before. Fostering literacy to empower lifelong learning. Um, healthy and effective learning environments. That's what we do. And I highly recommend you um, see Rebecca and Kelly's presentation later on about learning environments and how um, it increases um, productivity and learning as well. Wow, I realize I've only been talking for 15 minutes. I've got 45, so you might get out of here a little bit early. Um, so what did I do? The clips to micro bits. I hooked you in with that and I haven't showed you anything fun. I've just been rambling um, educational policy at you. So I brought the hands-on learning back into the library. I stopped teaching gym. We um, clustered our learning environment, or sorry, our learning areas. And we allowed students to have that voice in letting us know why this type of learning is important for them. So every task I have, um, at the end, I have a bit of a communicating my learning type of, I call it a dipstick, assessing where we are in their learning. So this one was called a muddy moment. What frustrated or confused me and why? So this student was able to explain that, um, in my mind, that he had trouble with his fine motor skills, that he um, had to untangle them. And when he was, um, was at the cutting stage, the ropes got tangled and he couldn't groom it properly. So all these words, all this communicating gives us an insight into um, what our school story is giving to this student. Um, woodworking. Oh, this one was fun. Um, so students were provided opportunities to use a pyrography pen. So a tool that they're not generally exposed to in their everyday life. And they posted a reflection onto their e-portfolios, which is an online documenting um, platform that we have here in my school district. And this was actually a uh, comment from the student's parents that it was um, such a cool idea when she told us. I was so happy for her to have a chance to burn wood on purpose. So we're not only tapping into the student's learning and um, communicating why learning is important to them, we're also having the engagement with the community and the parents. This one was fun. Um, we taught about rhythm and um, synchronicity, and we had students uh, practicing and learning um, the, the cup song. So they had to work in groups, and then at the end of the project, we had them come together. We brainstormed ideas of what it was like to collaborate and learn uh, with other students. And their dipstick was um, to create a free verse poem. So one of these students, my goodness, I wish my slide was bigger, um, decided to, it's free verse poem, I don't know if you can read it, complaining, framing, blaming is not trying. And again, my eyes can't see it, so you can just uh, finish writing that up. And it gives you this, this window into their learning that you may not have otherwise heard because you, all you heard was the bickering and you're trying to keep them from um, getting on each other's nerves. So um, I liked that one as well. And this is um, the clips part. Okay, so if you haven't been exposed to clips before, um, it's an awesome tool to allow your students to be creative and share their voice um, through different mediums. So um, I'm just going to show, oh, no, I'll show you at the end in case the technology doesn't work. So what we did is we came up with this little rubric. No one followed it, but they were able to get at least one of each clip 
um, done on its own. We still have to work on the editing phase. But essentially, students are um, able to use the iPads to record small little interviews or add in pictures and decorate them with stickers or what's called live titles. Now, live titles is kind of like a captioning system. You speak into it and it will generate the text at the bottom. Most of my students love to do that because they couldn't stand hearing their own voice being recorded. Um, uh, so here I'll show you Vienna and I apologize if some of you don't know French um, because she is speaking a little bit in French. Oh. Oops. Um, Christine, could you pop on and let me know if you're seeing Vienna's thing or my slideshow? I see Vienna. You see? Vienna? Like oh, you're je Vienna. Me, je Vienna. Parfait. Okay. Thank you. It's still on your presentation. Okay, that was my question for you. Um, okay, hang on, I'll go back. Uh, okay, let's see if I can find Vienna again. Okay. So my friend Vienna there um, was is in grade two and um, was very shy ELL learner um, and she she just excelled at that when she was able to have her own tool in her own hand and not having to um, conform to something that maybe she hadn't yet been exposed to vocabulary wise or technological wise. Um, and it gave her a chance to be the center of attention. Uh, she's very small and meek and um, very sweet. Okay, um, now I'm just gonna swing it back to questions if you have questions. Um, otherwise, um, my nerves are coming back up on me and my imposter syndrome is letting me know it's time to take questions. Feel free to um, just open up your mute button and we can share. No, no questions? Positive affirmations? Okay, you're a quiet group. Um, raise of hands, who would like an early break? <laughs> Vienna was using the tool clips, yes. Micro bits is um, a little bit my micro bits got pulled for a different school at the end of last year. And Christine and I are actually going to delve into them a little bit more uh, for our next steps, which are um, we're trying to increase students' vocabulary in maker space and um, ADST language in general. We teach in French. So that is our goal is to increase uh, their um, proficiency in language acquisition there. And it'll be part of, we have an innovation grant um, to do that this year. I really don't have a whole lot in CLIPS. But Christine, do you want to share a little bit about CLIPS if you feel comfortable? Um, so in terms of CLIPS, will my students prefer using iMovie? 
Just oh, sorry, I meant micro bits. Sorry, micro bits. It's, yeah, so micro bits, uh, there's a lot of coding that goes into it. And so through that, because it's practical experience, the students are able to acquire more vocabulary and language when they are communicating, opposed to just staying in the classroom, reading from a textbook or a, a, a book in general. So this allows that collaboration and engagement. And essentially through, you know, if you use your iPad or a laptop, you're able to create your own code and then see how like the transfer of coding to your everyday usage of technology. For example, an Apple Watch. So now they're actually thinking about ways that um, all the steps like ADST, all the processing that goes into creating a computer or a watch or not a laptop, for example. So age wise, I've taught um, mostly grade two through five, um, different types of um, coding we use here is Scratch. Um, did you use Python with your group, uh, Christine, or? No, I use, I use Scratch and, as well as just the Microbits yeah. website. Um, I know through the government of Canada, it's called Code Juness, and it actually has an English version to it where you can apply and get a free coding class and they will send, a, uh, I think it's a set of 10 Microbits to your school to use. Uh, we. There's also a site, um, I sh I'm so sorry, I should have added the, I don't have the link directly on with me, but I'll link it out through Twitter, um, is through UBC, edu, gearing up, gearing up. They have a fa fantastic selection of um, lesson plans and one that I was looking at connecting um, for orienteering and indigenous ways of knowing is um, what is it called tree location and modify culturally modified trees to help with compassing so your micro bit can actually um, tell you which direction is north whether you're going east south west and um, also gauge your what is it your heart rate so we've used it in gym for that, that section of the gym that no one really wants to teach where uh, the effects of exercise on your body. So you can get them running on the spot or around and then um, generate a heart, a heart rate on the micro bit. And they can, uh, you know, discuss what, what that means to them in, in communicating their learning as well. Thank you, Christine, for that. Do you want to put your Twitter handle there too for um, Christine is more um, the expert on French language. So I'm definitely honing in on her expertise. So if you want to follow Christine more for um, the professional French, uh, she'll put it in there too. Okay, my friends. Oh, one more? Nope. Okay. Thank you so much. This morning was a bit uh, chaotic for me and um, my nerves have come down. So I'll let you go. Oh, okay. We're at our normal. We're only five minutes early. All right, my friends. I will see you later and um, please enjoy the rest of your day. And if you haven't picked a, a webinar, uh, Rebecca and Kelly will be pretty fantastic. All right. Thank you.